Rocket Steam Studios just released a massive satisfactory 1.0 teaser, and as usual, it is absolutely incredible. What you're about to see is me reacting to the teaser for the very first time live plus my initial thoughts at the very end of the teaser. Expect a full in-depth analysis on this teaser on this channel within the next couple of days because there's a lot of really awesome stuff to go through. But as usual, a massive thank you to everyone that has subscribed to this channel in the last 24 hours. But without further ado, let's get into the teaser, plus my initial thoughts after reacting to it. Oh. The teaser at the new fence there in the background. The first thing I want to mention is that we are going to add two new liquid fuel types that we haven't talked about yet. Oh, damn. And those are both sort of extensions on the existing production chain for turbo fuel. And the first one I want to talk about uh. is rocket fuel. Rocket fuel! So nice. by combining nitric acid and turbo fuel in the blender, you're going to be able to produce uh, rocket fuel. And when you do this, you're also going to get a Ooh. byproduct of compacted coal. Just but like... rocket fuel isn't turbo fuel's final form. There's actually one extra step what? that you can take, and that is called ionized fuel. So by combining rocket fuel and uh, power shards in the refinery, you're going to be able to create ionized fuel. Uh, it will also leave a byproduct of compacted coal, uh, but I'm sure you'll find like a good use case for that. That seems and very sort of complicated. Deal, you know, and one thing I also want to mention on the topic of fuel types is that drones now can use most fuel types in the game. So drones are Ooh. no longer like exclusively for batteries. Okay. They can also take advantage of many of the different fuel types that you can package. So now when you're placing conveyor belts, they have two different build modes. You have the default build mode oh, nice. and you have the straight build mode. And the straight build mode is essentially what it tells you on the box. It will make so it so easier. that conveyor belts are always facing straight and they will make perfect 90 degrees. It's a long belt corner, as well. Making it a lot smoother. So this is going to be sort of the basic building block for almost all technology. That yes, you were correct with that then. Nice. So when you extract SAM yes. from the planet, you're going to be able to create something called reanimated SAM. And this part is going to be used in a lot of different things. For instance, you saw it in the converter and you mm -hmm. saw it in, yeah, most of, I think you've only seen it in the converter actually, I think about it. But yeah, it's going to be used for a lot of different things. Ooh. Reanimated SAM, you create in constructors straight with SAM and SAM fluctuators you create by combining uh, reanimated SAM, wire and pipes in the manufacturer. Okay. And by the way, it's just SAM now because we've renamed it to Strange Alien Matter and, and so it's not Sam or okay. I just want to oh. I just want to put that out there because it's, it's got so, sort of the same energy as saying ATM machine. Okay, it's like an extra thing. No need for it. It's just Sam. Okay. And I have to say this machine looks absolutely incredible. And even though a machine's main purpose, of course, is efficiency and what it produces, even just this machine's visuals looks absolutely insane. So that's always a bonus for me. We also got a very quick look right here at this jetpack where we get to see a bit more of the surrounding area as well, but we've already seen this in the last couple of trailers. But it does actually show off one of the brand new liquid types as well, which again, look how high that can boost you. That is really, really cool. If you don't use jetpacks in Satisfactory, this might be one of the reasons you might want to start. Because look at that verticality, you can gain so much vertical lift just from that. So I think that's really cool personally. This is a pretty major quality of life thing over here as well, but if we just rewind that a quick second, you can actually see when you place down the constructor, or I'm sure any machine for that matter, you have got a nice checkered line which shows you, yep, that's straight, that's going to connect into there. We also get a pretty good angle here as well with the mergers and the splitters. This is really cool. You can see right here, for example, you've got the output of this merger and the input of this merger. You know it goes together because of the checkered line. Whereas here, you've got an input and an input, so it's one straight line. This is such a cool feature, especially when you're looking at the ground and you, ha you haven't got much you know, of a, a vertical lift over your project and you can't see much around you. This is going to save you a lot of time, so that again, is a really, really cool feature. I did see them mention this little bit here about the chainsaw, so you can now select if you want to destroy the entire area, or if you want to destroy just the singular item you are looking at. At first, I can imagine people might be thinking, well, what's the point of this? It's kind of useless. It's not, especially when you're trying to make the nearby area look nice. And if you only want to get rid of one tree, not the four around it. So this is pretty good for beautifying a local area, especially. This next part I will massively go into in our next video coming out soon. But I love this like gold metallic caterium looking finish. I think this is the caterium one that you get on a lot of these walls. Some of them just look like paint, but I'm sure when you actually get into the game and mess around with lighting as well, because bear in mind, lighting is going to change this. I think having like a small tunnel, painting it like silver or painting it this caterium color 
and then having that light emit from the walls will look absolutely incredible and I can't wait to be messing around with this. But again, I'll mention a bit more about this in tomorrow's video. I think this machine is one of the most perfect additions into this game that they could have physically added. So, of course, power consumption can be quite important in this update, as you can see in the background. So this actually helps you by giving you an extra 500 megawatts of power, and it also contributes 10% of extra power as well, which, again, is very, very, very helpful. Here's another really cool angle as well. You do have to be cautious how much summer soup you do use on things like this, because summer soup's got more than just one, one key feature or addition in this update, such as you can now add it into production, and the best thing about this is that you can double the production outputs without actually using as much resources per minute, I assume. So rather than getting 30 iron ore for 30 iron ingots, now let's say it's 30 iron ore for 60 ingots with the addition of this thing. If you were to add regular power shards, it will go up from 60 iron ore to 60 iron ingots. You can't just like increase any of that sort of stuff, but this thing does. The only downside is that this consumes a lot more power. So it seems like update one is gonna be quite a power reliance update. So you need to save your power, it looks like. Here we get a slightly different angle of what I was just talking about. To make computers right here, we can see that we need four Somers loops. Whereas for turbo fuel, which we've actually changed the way some of these things look, by the way, you actually need two Somers loops. And let's have a quick look here into the inventory. We can see things like diamonds, supercomputers, compact core. Looks like quartz has got a new look, which looks quite nice. We've got the Fixite Ingots, Fixite Trigons. We've also got the Dark Quantum Crystal in there as well. And a couple of these things, which I think we have to get onto. And as you can see my face in the background there, it is this, Sam Ore, which we now know is called Strange Alien Matter. Also, as Snap points out, it's just called Sam, not Sam Ore. This thing is just Sam. And then we get onto this absolute beast of an item. And I actually don't want to spend too much time talking about this because... I'll be saving my thoughts for, again, tomorrow's video, but this is just my initial thoughts video, remember? And my initial thought for this is that it looks badass. I love it. I love the way it looks, and I love what it does. If you don't know what it does, let me show you. You can put all your items into this thing. It then uploads it to a cloud. From the cloud, you press this button, and then you can access a bunch of storage. So you might have something on one side of the map that you want to get to you. Just put it inside one of these dimensional deposits or depots, and just open it up to here. So it's basically a cloud that you can access in your pocket. It's awesome. And my last initial thought is, of course, of this blueprint. It's a 5x5 five five blueprint. This is something a lot of people have wanted, and now it's coming into the game. The only downside is that you can't transfer one Mark 1 blueprint onto a Mark 2 blueprint, but you can just copy and paste it over and then save it as a new blueprint. So what I do recommend doing is the second you unlock this, Stop crafting anything in the Mark 1 blueprint and just use this instead. I don't know how much this is going to cost, but I'm sure we'll find out in a couple of days' time. My overall feedback is that I think that this thing looks absolutely incredible. I'm loving Update 1 so far, even though it's not even out yet, but seeing all the features that they're adding into the game generally makes me very excited to play. I know I keep saying this, but tomorrow I'll have a, a further in-depth video that's going to come out. It might come out a few hours later than, the, than when I normally upload my videos because there's just so much information to go through. And today's Friday, and I, I'm not home Friday evenings, unfortunately, so I, I haven't got time to edit the video now. Um, but either way, I'm still very excited to see what else they're going to add and what other information they haven't yet told us. Because Snat said that they've given us most of the information, but there's still a couple of things that they haven't yet said. And there's also a few things in this teaser that I haven't mentioned in this video either, because again, this is just my initial feedback, and these are all the things that stood out to me the most. I'm going to go write a Word document, of, and I'm going to literally write down absolutely every single point that's not mentioned in this video, and go over everything tomorrow. So tomorrow's video, it's going to be a big one, be there, be square. But before I spend 17 and a half hours talking about everything in this teaser, I think it's a good idea just to leave it there for now, and save the bulk of the content for tomorrow.